Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I'm Tremaine Wright. I'm the chair of the Cannabis Control Board. Um, it is wonderful to be here with all of you in person today. Um, this is our first meeting with an actual audience. So thank you very much for showing up. Um, recognizing that we have all the board members present or participating re remotely, um, I am pleased to call to order another meeting of the Cannabis Control Board. The meeting will be recorded and a transcript will be available on our web, on the public website of the Office of Cannabis Management, which is cannabis.ny.gov. And additionally, information on the Cannabis Control Board meetings is available on that site. As we get started today, I'd like to adopt today's agenda with amendments. Um, today we are going to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the agendas have been presented in front of all the board members. Uh, we would like to make some changes from the agenda that had been circulated. Today, we would like to remove the resolutions that were proposed for Etain, Vireo Health, and Nicana's LLC's um, change of ownership. So moving forward, the um, agenda will read that the only change of control resolutions which we will be handling today are for the organization Sativa Medical LLC, and FARCAMA of a New York LLC. All other items remain the same on the agenda. Um, may I have a motion to approve and adopt the agenda as amended? I make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, so there, additionally, today's agenda is gonna have some opening remarks a review of our control board, I'm sorry, of our minutes from our previous control board meeting, um, consideration of conditional adult use cultivator licenses, as well as processor licenses, consideration of our home grow regulations and our cannabinoid hemp regulations, as well as a candidate for first deputy general counsel for the Office of Cannabis Management, um, a reaffirmation of resolution 2022-29, for a limited partnership agreement for the social equity fund and um, a report from our executive director, Chris Alexander, and thereafter we'll adjourn. Um, I'd like to make a couple of remarks right now um, because I need to note that we are once again here in person. Um, the executive order that allowed us to meet remotely during the pandemic was not renewed. Um, therefore, now moving forward, all of our meetings will be in person. However, we will continue to live stream all meetings. Um, today's first order of business is to give an update on our seeding opportunity initiative, which we've been working on diligently since the middle of this year. We currently have approved 242 adult use conditional cultivator licensees. They're growing and harvesting the first regulated legal adult use cannabis in New York State. We also have 15 processors um, and they're taking the cannabis that's being grown by our cultivators and they're making it into the retail, the retail products that we're gonna need. Um, today, we're gonna be approving more applicant licensees in each type, both cultivator and processor, um, as we continue to push forward with the seeding opportunity initiative. And then we're going to have um, a last leg of this seeding opportunity initiative, we're going to be discussing our conditional retail dispensary licensees or the card licenses. Last month, we opened the application portal um, and with one week left, with less than a week left, the portal closes on September 26th. The application portal is gonna close and then our office will begin to review applications and they plan to begin issuing the card licenses um, before the end of this year. This is a monumental feat, and it could not have been possible without the many community advocates and partners who worked to share this wonderful opportunity with all of New York. I really do just want to say thank you to all of your hard work and especially to our staff here at the OCM who have been working diligently to bring this to fruition. Additionally, today, we're going to be considering the medical home grow um, regulations, which I know are eagerly anticipated. The amendments to the cannabinoid hemp program, um, both of which went, underwent significant public comment periods. 
And um, I speak for all of the board when we want to say thank you again for our public comments that we received from all of the public to our staff here at OCM who researched and made sure that we were really putting forward well-researched, thoughtful regulations. Um, everyone's participation really did make a difference and we are really looking forward as a board. We're looking forward to what's to come as we continue to build out the regulatory scheme for New York State. Um, so let's get started with the review and approval of our meeting minutes from September 13th meeting. Um, may I ha please have a motion to consider and approve the September 13th, 2022 board meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, are there any discussion or comments from any board members? No. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And the motion to approve the September 13th board minutes carries. Um, now we're going to move on to, I'm sorry, we are about to move on to our, um, the resolutions related to the, um, change of control. I'm sorry, there was a slight change. So I just wanted to shift gears a little bit. So we're going to begin with the discussion of the re resolutions. Um, Board Member <laughs> Garcia has identified that she will be abstaining from any discussion and the vote regarding the change of ownership of any registered organizations. Um, and while she will not be stepping away, she will remain here. Um, I would like to propose for our board that we consider the two resolutions as one item. Um, so we're talking about the resolution uh, considering the registered, the change of change of control for registered organizations, the TIVA Medical LLC, as well as the change of ownership for registered organization Pharmacan of New York LLC. Um, I am proposing that we please consider these as one item together. Therefore, I'm asking if we can please have a motion to consider resolutions number 2022-30 and 2022-33 together. I'll make that motion. Second. And we have a second. Um, are there any comments? I'm sorry, before we do that, let's please go to um, get some overview of this, of these resolutions that are before us from our executive director, Chris Alexander. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and greetings to all of you joining us. This is an exciting day. Uh, thanks for bearing with us through all the, the technical uh, challenges as we, we transition here. Uh, before I begin, we did have five transactions in front of the board that we plan to bring in front of the board uh, today, but uh, due to some attendance challenges and abstentions, we have decided to move forward with the two, and we'll bring those three additional transactions back in front of the board uh, at the subsequent board meeting. For background, there are currently 10 registered organizations uh, providing medical cannabis to the patients of New York State. Before the board today are two resolutions that, if approved, would, ap would approve uh, changes of ownership of those two registered organizations, which includes Sativa Medical and um, Sativa Medical and Pharmacana of New York LLC. Uh, following a review of the documentation submitted by the registered organizations in accordance with the cannabis law and its existing regulations, the office recommends the approval of these changes in ownership in front of the board today. Approval of these changes will allow for the continuation and advancement of these registered organizations' ability to provide service, quality service to the patients of New York State. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there any discussion or questions from the board regarding these changes in ownership? Um, and so hearing that there was no objection, we approved this approach. I am going to ask if um, I can get a, I'm going to call the vote um, to consider these resolutions to, as one vote. Um, Ms. Metzger, how do you vote? Aye. McDaniels here. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote in the affirmative as well. Therefore, the motion to approve resolutions number 2022-30 and resolution number 2022-33 carries. Um, at this time, we're going to shift gears and consider some of our um, applicant licensees. The next order of business is resolution number 2022-30. Um, 
It's regarding conditional adult use cultivated licenses. May I please have a motion to consider resolution number 20-22-30, the resolution issuing certain conditional adult use cultivator licenses. Make the motion. So moved or second. First and seconded. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Alexander, can you please provide an overview of this uh, matter? Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you, Madam Chair. Uh, the office has brought before the board an additional 19 uh, conditional cultivators, all of whom have uh, demonstrated uh, and met the eligibility requirements that were put forward in the uh, conditional cultivator legislation advanced uh, in February. Uh, this will add to our pool. We're, we're going to continue to license our conditional cultivators, those who've met the eligibility criteria. And I just want to add a quick note here that we're very excited uh, of the work that's being done by our small farmers across the state of New York. They've done, they've grown some incredible product. They're excited to move that forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions or comments from the board? Related My only side. comment <laughs> is that I'm excited to see all this good quality cannabis growing out of doors. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're approaching <laughs> the 260 growers. I think that we are going to have a very nice harvest here in New York State. Thank you. <laughs> um, hearing no more comments, I'll call for the vote. Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote in the affirmative as well. Therefore, the motion to approve resolution number 2022-30, a resolution issuing certain conditional Adult use cultivator licensees carries. And I think if you, I think it was on the screen a couple of minutes before, but if you follow on the screens, um, you'll be able to see all of the licensees that, uh, I'm sorry, applicants that are before us and that are being approved in the attached resolutions. Um, and now we're going to move forward with the next order of business, which is resolution to consider certain adult use conditional processors. Uh, may I have a motion to consider resolution number 2022-31, a resolution issuing certain adult use conditional processor licenses. So moved. Move a second. Second. Thank you. Um, and here again, I'd like to ask our executive director if you can please have, um, provide a brief overview of these uh, processor licenses. Sure thing, Madam Chair. So as, as you highlighted in your opening comments, this is forwarding the seeding opportunity initiative announced by the governor earlier this year. I'm excited to bring the next uh, step in the supply chain to life by lic licensing an additional 10 uh, conditional processors uh, who are going to turn that quality cannabis into some quality cannabis products. So uh, with any uh, without further comment, if the board has any questions, I'm pleased to answer. <laughs> are there any additional questions or comments? Related to this, hearing none, um, I'll call the vote. Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote in affirmative as well. The motion to approve resolution number 2022-31, a resolution issuing certain adult use conditional processor licenses has, carries. Um, and now before us, we are about to move forward to our medical home grow um, regulations. Um, this is the consideration of the regulations to file and to make them effective. May I please have a motion to consider resolution number 2022-32, a resolution to permit the Office of Cannabis Management to adopt revised regulations for the home cultivation of medical cannabis. Make that motion. I'll second. So we're first and second. Um, may I please ask Nicole Krakenbush, our Director of Health and Safety, to provide a brief overview of these regulations. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. Today is a very exciting day for the medical cannabis program, as we've been working to make medical cannabis more accessible and affordable for New Yorkers across the state. As you know, in April, the board directed us to file revisions to the proposed medical home cultivation regulations. The 45-day public comment period ended on July 25th. Thank you again to the public for submitting comments. The office reviewed the comments received, and today we are recommending that the regulations be filed with the Department of State for adoption. When these regulations go into effect, certified patients and designated caregivers over the age of 21 
we'll be able to grow up to three mature and three immature cannabis plants at one time. Some additional key points that certified patients and designated caregivers should be aware of. A certified patient may only have one designated caregiver grow on their behalf. A designated caregiver can grow medical cannabis for up to four certified patients. However, they cannot grow more than 12 plants, which would include six mature and six immature plants in total at any one time if growing for multiple certified patients. Patients and caregivers should reach out to dispensaries prior to visiting to confirm availability of the seeds or immature plants for sale for home cultivation. I also encourage patients and caregivers who are interested in medical home cultivation to visit our Office of Cannabis Management website, where we have published uh, some frequently asked questions, and there will also be a home cultivation guide available, which also includes some important points to keep patients and caregivers safe and in compliance with the regulations that they choose to home cultivate. If approved by the board today, the regulations would become effective on October 5th, which is the first date in which they would be published in the New York State Register. Uh, one last thing, I'd like to take a moment to thank my colleagues at the Office of Cannabis Management for their hard work and collaboration on these regulations, as well as the supporting ed educational materials. Again, this is an exciting milestone for our medical cannabis program. Thank you, and I'm very happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Nicole. Um, are there any questions, comments, concerns from the board? Um, well, I just want to say that I'm, I'm really thrilled we're taking this step. I want to thank staff for all of their work on these regulations. I think it's going to really improve the accessibility and affordability of cannabis for, for some of cannabis patients. Um, and I look forward to our next step of going, you know, applying these, apply, do, completing the regulations for adult use. Um, I wouldn't be me if I didn't just mention <laughs> that. Um, so guidance will be coming out from the office, um, you know, to help people that are growing at home and, um, you know, to just, um, you know, consider, um, you know, really trying to, you know, take the most energy efficient approach when you're investing in that equipment up front, because it can have a huge impact on your electricity bills and of course it's better for the environment if you do that as well so and if you can grow outdoors all the better but that's not an option for everyone so but anyway i'm very excited we're taking this step and again thanks staff for their work on this thank you yes so are there any additional comments so without further ado, um, I'll call the vote. Um, Ms. Metzger. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Garcia. Aye. Mr. Perry. Aye. And I vote in affirmative as well. The motion to approve resolution number 2022-32, resolution to adopt the medical cannabis home grow regulations carries. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and I hope that the rest of the work is been so well received. <laughs> no, but seriously, our next order of business is also much anticipated. It's the cannabinoid hemp regulations. So therefore, may I please have a motion to consider resolution number 2022-33. It's a resolution to direct the Office of Cannabis Management to adopt amendments to the cannabinoid hemp regulations for public comment. So moved. A motion. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'll ask our executive director again to please provide an overview of this matter. Uh, I'll kick it over to our chief of staff and senior policy director, Axel Burnaby. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Happy to uh, talk about this. It's not quite as exciting as the uh, the medical home grow regs, <laughs> uh, which have been a long, long time coming. But we, you know, we want to remind folks that our mission at the OCM is to regulate and grow uh, not only the medical program, the adult use program, but also the hemp program. And so we're always trying to make 
that a more accessible program, a better program. And I think, you know, we can safely say that we have one of the most comprehensive and uh, um, recognized set of regulations in the cannabinoid hemp space, so uh, I I in the country. And so, so we're proud of that fact, um, but we did want to make some changes. We approved these regulations back in the fall. Uh, and then since then, we, we added some amendments that have gone through public comment. So thank you for folks for commenting on those. And some of the most important ones I just want to cover again, and they were courtesy of board member Jen Metzger, who is always focused on making sure that small farmers have access and have the least burdensome way of uh, getting their products to market. So some of the most significant changes that we're making here, uh, and if the board approves them, which will we be adopting on the October 5th register, is uh, to create a new license type under the hemp uh, program, which is cannabinoid hemp processors, which would mean that if, if you're a small farmer and you're growing less than a thousand pounds of dried flour um, and you want to sell flour product, either directly to the consumer or to another retailer, then you will be able to do so without getting a separate processor license, which can be a little bit more expensive and has some you know, good manufacturing practice requirements and stuff. So that, that I think is a huge step and we want to thank uh, the board on that. Again, you would be selling just flour. So this is for uh, edibles or any other processed goods because then you start to get into some more uh, GMP-like requirements. The second thing we would do is define uh, craft, and which is a term that gets used loosely, but we want to make it again available to folks that are growing less than a thousand pounds, which is still a fair amount, and that are hand drying and hand curing and hand packaging their flour products, so uh, their pre-rolls or others, in the hemp space, and they would be able to use craft, and we'd hope that they would similarly grow outdoors, grow in sustainable uh, manners, and that they could get some shelf space and get recognized at retail and be able to sort of push their products through. So we're very excited about that. A few uh, other uh, changes that we've made that are more technical in nature, but respond to the products uh, that we've seen at retail. We are increasing the uh, total cannabinoid content of products from 75 milligrams to 100 milligrams, because that seems to be more in line with how people are consuming these products. We're removing the requirement that the products be shelf stable. So that's, um, that's a holdover from the food industry that, that doesn't seem to be as, as necessary here in the cannabinoid space. And also, recognizing that not um, not all countries and not all states have the same standards that New York has. We are requiring folks that are making product or importing hemp from out of state to tell us where it's coming from. And if it's out of country to tell us what country it's coming from. We're less concerned about our sister states that often have very reputable hemp programs, but we have seen some product coming in from out of other countries where you know heavy metals and, and some pesticides seem to be a problem. So we're just asking folks to identify those and we do have a, a requirement under the under the cannabinoid regs that we do uh, make sure that every product that's coming in from out of state uh, meets the New York standards. And so we will be we will be further working on that. And uh, so so that's it. If this gets approved, like I said, on the fifth October fifth, it'll be it'll be final. And also, we'd like to telegraph that we will be making further amendments. We'll, so we'll adopt these, but then we'll probably republish with other amendments in the uh, in the spirit of always improving and ever up uh, upwards in Excelsior Cannabis. And uh, uh, so we will be making some changes, conforming the licensing process, including from the board perspective, on approving licenses in the hemp space so that it conforms with adult use and medical. So uh, here to answer any questions, but really uh, glad for your guidance and your approval of these regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? I would just say that was a great summary, Axel. And, um, you know, the craft labeling, you know, we we want to make sure that it is actually craft. <laughs> and that's that's the point of this regulation. And it will really help those small producers, those artisanal producers. Um, and um, really the requirement about of you know, state of origin, country of origin is really important for consumers so they can make informed decisions about their products. So um, great job to everyone on these regs and excited to see you improve. Thank you, everyone. Um, I do wanna say thank you. This is a space where a lot of our um, folks who are not gonna make huge monetary investments into the space, into cannabis are finding their lane um, and this was one of the things that I think a lot of the people who were crafting and developing the idea of how the MRTA would look and or operate were envisioning that we would be creating spaces that allow people with 
less economic means to enter into this space and to have a space of uh, an opportunity to really create businesses that will be able to pivot even once we're federal and they um, know exactly how they're going to continue to be a part of the New York State cannabis industry. So thank you everyone for that work. Um, if there are no more questions or comments, I'm going to um, call the vote. Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote in affirmative as well. For the motion to approve resolution number 2022-23, resolution to adopt the cannabinoid hemp regulations carries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we can clap for that. We said this has been long awaited. <laughs> and we're really giving folks who want to be a part of New York's industry the tools necessary so that they can define their businesses and really push things forward. Um, the next item before us, I believe, is going to be our, I might be a little bit out of order, so please forgive me. Um, first, step. first Deputy De um, General Counsel. So, um, the next item on our agenda is for consideration is the executive director's recommendation for the first deputy general counsel. Um, without further ado, may I please have a motion to consider resolution number 2022-39, a resolution to approve the appointment of the first deputy counsel. So moved. So moved. So we have a first and a second. Thank you from our governance team. <laughs> Is there, um, I'm going to ask, are there any questions, comments related to this um, resolution to approve the recommendation after we vote? No? Okay. Therefore, I'm going to call for a vote. Um, Ms. Metzger? Aye. Ms. Garcia? Aye. Mr. Perry? Aye. And I vote an affirmative as well. The motion to approve resolution number 2022-39, a resolution to approve the appointment of the first deputy counsel carries. This time I'm, uh, I'd like to um, ask our executive director, Chris Alexander, to come forward and to um, share some remarks regarding this resolution and his recommendation. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we have been moving very fast here at OCM um, and I could not be more proud of the work that's been done um, but the only thing I'm, I'm more proud of is the team that we've built here. Uh, Patricia, who's with us today right here. <laughs> um, uh, has been an, is an incredibly accomplished attorney, has stepped into uh, leadership roles, managing uh, significant projects here at the office. So just excited to announce uh, and to appoint you to this new role. Uh, and we appreciate your continued support and commitment to the mission. Thank you. Thank you, Chris, and congratulations, Patricia. We're excited to have you in your new role. Um, and finally, we're on to the last resolution that's been that's on our agenda for today, and it's um, the reaffirmation of resolution 20 20 I'm sorry 2022 29. And it was a resolution to approve a limited partnership agreement between the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York and Social Equity Impact Venture um, Ventures GP one LLC or general partnership one LLC. Um, as many of you might recall, we approved this resolution at our last board meeting, but the executive order, which allowed for remote open meetings had expired the day before. And so to avoid any complications, we would like to vote to reaffirm this resolution now. Um, but before we proceed, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, may I please have a motion to consider resolution number 2022-29. Make that motion. Yes. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Is there any discussion by any board member on the resolution before us? None. Um, I'll call for the vote. Ms. Metzger. Aye. Ms. Garcia. Aye. Mr. Perry. Aye. And I vote in the affirmative as well. The vote to approve resolution number 2022-29, a resolution to approve the limited partnership agreement 
between the Dormitory Authority of the State of New York and Social Equity Impact Ventures General Partnership 1 LLC carries. Um, and at this time now we'll turn and I'll ask our Executive Director if he'll please come forward with his Executive Report. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I've been highlighting for the last several months, we've been uh, running around the state, our external team uh, in particular, uh, making sure to elevate attention and awareness on the card application process. Um, at this point in time, we've, we've hit almost everywhere, almost every corner of the state. We have a couple more events, or I think one more event coming up on Thursday uh, in Plattsburgh. I'm so excited of the energy around this program and around this opportunity and really uh, the work that's been done by the team to ensure that this is not, again, one of those government programs that folks miss out on because they did not know. Uh, so we're really excited about the feedback um, that we've received, uh, the engaging with the public on this opportunity. We're going to continue to do that. And this is a model as well for future opportunities that we roll out, that commitment to engagement that we will carry over. The card application window, as a reminder to everybody, does close on September 26th, the chair said earlier. Uh, we are urging folks who have started applications, who have thought about applying, who meet the eligibility criteria, uh, to finish up and get your application. And it's a huge opportunity. We don't want you to miss it. Um, I do want to kind of highlight one item uh, that was raised as we've gone through uh, our work of um, bringing the cannabis law to life. Uh, that is, uh, you know, piercing through what ownership restrictions look like. Particularly, uh, we've recently published guidance for true parties of interest and what that means in our two-tier market structure. I'll turn it over to uh, Axel Burnaby uh, to, share more, to share some more details in a moment. Um, but additional resources like this that guide operators uh, are going to continue to be published on our website. And so I'm encouraging folks to continue to go to cannabis.ny.gov where they will see regularly updated uh, guidance uh, updated FAQs that are responsive to the feedback that we're getting from the public. You know, anytime we do one of these engagements, we get a question, a uh, unique question raised uh, at one of these sessions, we, as a team, craft our response and put it up on the site so that everybody can have access to it. That's a really important part of our work. Uh, so, Axel, I'm going to take it over to you on the, the TPI discussion. Happy to, happy to talk about that a little bit, Chris, and with the board's indulgence. And uh, I apologize in advance if this sounds a little, uh, you know, a little technical, but uh, I think, you know, Chris and the board highlighted that we're moving into another phase on Monday. We're going to be closing the conditional adult use retail dispensaries. So now we have some cultivators, your early cultivators. We, we're going to have a, a little less than 300 when all is said and done. That's probably what we'll have. We currently have about 25 processors that are conditional. And now we're going to have 175 dispensaries. That's just the beginning. This is, this is nothing relative to the number of licenses we're going to need to service the New York market. Uh, we wanted to start this way because in other states, it's been very difficult to get social equity in, small farmers in, and larger operators that were established and already had, you know, uh, facilities were able to come in first. So that's really what we were looking to do. And I think once we have this supply chain, everybody's going to be able to come in and start growing that supply chain. So we think the opportunity really is before us. If you are a card applicant, as Chris said, though, you should be you know, finalizing your application. It is a great opportunity. You know who it is that would qualify, but it's a, it's a narrower pool. And it, again, is for a very limited number of uh, original licenses. And it's going to be on a rolling basis. So please, please don't worry about that. But now that we're entering that second stage, <clears throat> we have to start talking about what's unique about the cannabis law as it was passed under the MRTA. What's unique is that we passed a system um, of uh, an economic architecture, which is a two-tier system. It's like the alcohol model. So nobody else in the state other than in the, in the country other than Washington uh, and, and Canadian provinces have adopted this model. And, and it makes for some very peculiar ways of building businesses. So whether you're a card applicant or you're a conditional farmer or processors, you really have to be familiar with, with, with what's called the two-tier mar market model and with what Chris said, which is the true party of interest analysis, which means there are gonna be restrictions in parties' abilities to participate in both tiers of the market. So you got your supply tier, which is gonna have the cultivators, the processors, and the distributors, just like in alcohol, you have your alcohol suppliers, your vineyards, your, your, liquor, your liquor suppliers. And then you're going to have retail stores. And the retail stores are going to be like wine stores and liquor stores, mom and pop stores mainly, small businesses, although we're allowing folks to have up to three, that are going to be independent of that supply tier. So if you're starting a card license or if you're a supplier or a brand, you have to be very careful not to cross that tier. 
and that's called undue influence. So you can't have uh, a lender, for example, <clears throat> that's lending to both a card applicant and that's also lending to a supplier. Or you know you can't have somebody that takes stock ownership in both sides. You're going to have to pick a tier. You're going to have to work with one group, either the retailers or the suppliers. Same thing on the supply tier. There are going to be some restrictions on the number of licenses you can hold because the MRTA and the cannabis law requires this to be a small business, small and medium-sized enterprise business market. So you're going to be limited in the number of licenses you can hold as a cultivator, for example. We're going to allow for investment across multiple licenses, but you can't go up and stack licenses. You can't you know, build a, a very large grow on the basis of holding multiple licenses like you can in most other states. And there's a real, there's a real basic reason for the, 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 the fact that the cannabis law does this. It's to encourage small and medium-sized businesses. It's really to create a more democratic and a, and a smaller accessible and open market for folks. So if you do, as Chris pointed out, there, there is some guidance. It's called, uh, it's called Guidance on True Parties of Interest and uh, F FAQ. So you'll see a description of these vertical and horizontal tiers, but it's going to become part of your lexicon and part of your language if you're, if you're working in this space now. But I just want to reemphasize that it's, it's a positive thing. It will allow folks to be able to function and compete and small New York brands uh, be able to make their way through retail. So that's a lot to digest, but we really uh, encourage, especially card applicants and current growers and processors to look at that and understand those rules and email us with questions. As Chris said, we do take all the questions we get and we roll them up into uh, questions and answers and then send them out so everybody can benefit from those FAQs. So that, that's, that's a big development and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. Thank you, Axel. Um, I just want to give uh, two quick more updates, well, one more update and, and one more uh, uh, point of personal privilege. Um, I do want to update uh, the state on some of the recent work of the office engaging with the state's poison control centers, uh, two trainings uh, for that staff doing that intake. Uh, folks suffering from adverse reactions uh, uh, were conducted um, and really the important work of the agency in doing new education on all folks interacting with the cannabis plant. Um, is, is underway, is well underway. Uh, the training contained an overview of cannabis and cannabinoids, product forms and their effects, and national New York state law and policy. Now, this data is going to help demonstrate the rates of adverse effects related to cannabis products, as well as accidental cannabis consumption for those who may have consumed cannabis without intending to, and for cases where individuals may have consumed more cannabis than desired. And this was an important step for, for our office, an important step for the Poison Control Center staff, to better understand the cannabis as they continue to do their work. And we're gonna to continue to commit ourselves to, to doing that type of education across our government. Um, the last thing I just want to add on, on the medical home grow regulations, the important step taken uh, by the board today, uh, you know, we've prioritized patient access in this program. One of the first things that we did uh, were to advance, was to advance the medical program, new regulations, making it more accessible for patients. We're gonna to continue to work on that. That is a commitment of this office. Uh, and we're, you know, it's, it's going to continue to be a priority. So I'm just really excited that we're able to provide uh, this more affordable option to patients to get access to that medicine. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the board? All righty. So at this time, I want to remind everyone that the time, location, and the live stream link um, will be shared on cannabis.ny.gov in advance of our next Cannabis Control Board meeting. Um, a recording of today's meeting, the meeting minutes, and a, transcri a transcription will be posted on the site as well. And that concludes today's agenda items. So um, at this time, I would like to know, may I have a motion to please adjourn the meeting? So moved. I'll second and like thank to thank you. everyone for coming. <laughs> <laughs> if there are no questions, hearing none, um, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. And this motion. To adjourn the meeting carries. We will now adjourn. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all for joining us.